where we hear from the chief of the city telling us what happened last year and then what's going to happen in 2013. Many of you have realized that this is only one of the special occasions that have happened in the last six weeks. First of all, you, December, five Fridays, five Saturdays, and five Sundays, and won't happen again for 823 years. So when, if any one of you are around at that time, phone me, okay? <laughs> and then to top it all off, I think it may be possible that the National Hockey League is finally going to get back to work. Now maybe, it's kind of a question mark, but again, another exciting event in the history of Canada and the United States and others. And then the third one, of course, is the famous fiscal cliff, which turned out to be a fiscal slope. But if we, I always thought that the legislature here in Alberta and the parliament in Ottawa was a somber place of second review of things that should occur and affect each and every one of us. Then I watched the arguments in Congress and I said, definitely we do a lot better job here. So anyway, uh, here we are and then, I know the mayor is going to mention this, but we finally, I think, have got an event center coming. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, you could, I just don't want to put any, anybody on edge about that. Let me say this, though, that uh, this is the La Mer de Ville de Medicine Hat, a French Normand, Normand Boucher. Most of us would think of that he would be wearing a beret, but he wears a nice hat, and I don't know, it looks Australian norm. So I was just wondering, you know, why would he not? But that's a, that's a question to be answered another year. And I understand that he might be interested in being back with us next year. So that's kind of nice to know ahead of time, you know, kind of predicting along the way for 2013. But ladies and gentlemen, here is the fellow who has been the mayor of Medicine Hat. Now this is his second term. And uh, doing a good job of trying to keep those aldermen under control. Oh, that's a difficult, it's like hurting cats. Less doesn't... This is the only alderman here. I can't see what the rest of them would think when I said that. But you know what I mean, you know. Each one has an independent opinion. And of course, the, the mayor has to be that diplomat, that controller. And then get his two bits worth in there too, because from time to time, it'd be a shame if you didn't, Norm. But he's done a very good job of coordinating what's going on in this community. Uh, they are, are on the verge, on the fiscal cliff, not the fiscal cliff, on the cliff of excitement coming up in 2013. Some of these things are culminating into a fine direction. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, His Worship Mayor Norman Boucher. Thank you very much, Ken. Good afternoon, everyone. And again, this year we're having a chance to, at least it's, it's for us, a chance to, to show what the city has done. It might be boring for some of you, but you're, I'm going to give you, this is our chance to celebrate what we've done and some of the things that we are looking at for the next year or so. Uh, to all of you who are here, friends, I know there's quite a few businesses, uh, people who represent strong businesses in this community. Uh, we have quite a few people from our from City Hall who actually contribute in making the city better. Uh, we have people from the military. By the way, I can, they're not from Batis, they're from the Canadian base. <laughs> so, but, but they look after Batis and that's actually a big, uh, a big part of what, what we are as, as a community is trying to serve them. Uh, and they contribute quite a bit economically to Medicine Hat. So to all of you, welcome. And as uh, Ken has said, this is uh, my last time to talk to you under this uh, second term, and we'll see what happens uh, at the end of the year. But I'd also like to thank uh, the Messonat um, uh, 
Kiwanis Club for organizing this and making sure that we have a chance to speak to you and present where we stand. And together with the Chamber of Commerce, who represents probably close to 800 different people and businesses in the community, I shouldn't say people, but businesses in the community, thank you for putting that up so that we can uh, present what the city does for our citizens and for businesses here. <clears throat> So again this year, it's been another uh, three years of great progress in our infrastructure, facilities and development in Medicine Hat. And I'm proud of what the City Council and our city staff have, have accomplished. Our success has been as a result of support and feedback we received from you, the residents of our great community. Thank you for this. As always, in the new year, when we reflect back on the growth and progress of the previous year, we are amazed by how much we accomplished. The smoothly paved roadways and leisure trails, increased access to residential and business area, and better, more convenient facilities and equipment. It is gratifying to see a project through the completion and to really understand the value that we get for the money we invest on your behalf. I hope you can hear me correctly. Not bouncing, okay. This address to you, our residents, business people, and dignitaries gives me, city council, city staff, the opportunity to share with you the accomplishment and achievements we've attained throughout the past year on your behalf. As part of city council's mandate each year, a weekend session is held to bring the nine council members together to discuss the new year's corporate priorities. In February 2012, city council identified seven priorities for staff to incorporate into their projects as part of the overall planning and budget, including seven different things. The first one was economic development. Second thing was downtown development. Third thing was infrastructure. Fourth was air service. The fifth thing was fiscal sustainability. The sixth thing was quality of life in Medicine Hat. And the seventh thing was leader in environmental practices. In April, after weeks of presentation and revision, the City of Medicine Hat three, uh, sorry, the City of Medicine Hat three-year budget plan were approved and many of the projects under council priorities were able to begin. So in 2012, it proved to be a very productive year for construction project. The weather was relatively cooperative and many of the projects got done on time and on budget due to both the drier spring and summer and the late fall. Construction in the remainder of 2nd Street Southeast continued in 2012. This time, east of, railway, of the railway tracks. Although inconvenient for the arena and curling rink, the police and the athletic park traffic for a brief period of time, the work is complete with the final asphalt lift going on in the spring. Additionally, a couple of other large construction projects, South Ridge Drive and Connaught Area, caused traffic disruption in the south uh, in the south end but resulted uh, sorry but the results were worth it the south ridge rollway is smooth with two lanes in both directions and traffic lights more accommodating to traffic flow the construction upgrade included road concrete asphalt reconstruction as well as utility relocation and led street light installation the work will conclude in 2013 with the final asphalt layer and pavement markings, construction of a multi-use trail and a final landscaping. The total cost of the project is expected to be $11.7 million. The Connaught area, the improvement there uh, will provide residents dependable and reliable utility infrastructure for many years to come. The latest phase of the, of the project included replacement of rep and repair of water, storm, sanitary, and surface infrastructure on Primrose Drive and connecting cul-de-sacs. Much of this infrastructure was near the end of its service life with significant deterioration due to groundwater and soil condition. The next phase of the construction in Connaught is expected to be completed in the spring or summer this year and the final phase to top lift asphalt on west side in 2014. The project's total cost is $10.3 million. 
College Drive upgrades in conjunction with improvement to Connaught area and nearby South Ridge Drive saw the replacement and winding of the existing road structure to accommodate a bike lane, concrete curb, gutter, and sidewalks, as well as installation of a new stormwater catch basin to improve drainage. The majority of work was completed by October. However, final asphalt and concrete construction will be completed in spring 2013. Total cost of this project is estimated at $800,000. Barfew Drive Northeast. Where's Ted here? Where did I see Ted before? Ted Ronich with the co-op. Anyway, Barfew Drive Northeast was another major roadway construction project 2012 from Division Avenue North to 20th Street Northeast, expanding the length as a four-lane roadway at a cost of 12 million bucks. This project will also continue and conclude in 2013. In conjunction with Park, Parkview Drive extension undertaken by Municipal Works, the gas utility, utility completed a main extension in the area during August. Earlier in the year, <clears throat> the solar panels powered pedestrian beacons to be used in our city were added to the existing leg of the Parkview Drive, providing pedestrians with an improved and safer crossing. The solar-powered beacons use wireless technology and are activated by a conventional push button. The post mountain beacons flash with a high-intensity light pattern that immediately indicate to motorists that a pedestrian wants to use the crosswalk. The city's gas utility also had a number of construction projects this year, including a replacement of the late 1940s gas feeder main along Industrial Avenue by Seven Person Creek and Factory Street. The project wrapped up in October. This section completes the replacement of this feeder main from Porter Station to Maple Avenue and First Street Southeast to the Allowance Avenue overpass. Additional gas utility projects concluded in 2012 were six blocks of residential lower pressure gas main replacement in the Southeast Hill area. Upgrades to two low pressure station and one medium pressure station. 1,325 meters of gas main replacement and 115 residential commercial services replacement or upgrades. In January 2012, the city's gas utility purchased the Miniberry's light oil assets for $48 million. The property is expected to contribute to the sustainability of gas utility by creating a greater mix between natural gas and oil assets. The property has tremendous potential for future development opportunities. Four staff with knowledge of the field operation have been retained from the former energy company to assist with running the assets, giving us a major foothold to keeping the assets sustainable during the transaction. The Medicine Hat Solar Thermal Project, it progressed through 2012. Harnessing solar energy and integrating it with the city's natural gas fired power plant to, re to reduce emission and fuel consumption will allow it to respond to daytime spikes in energy demands. The 2.3 hectare solar field will be loca located directly east of the Gas City campground and will consist of a multi-solar collector assembly designed to focus and concentrate the sun's light. And the project is the first of its kind in Canada and will be the highest latitude towards thermal project in the world. Phase one, which was successfully completed in December 2011, consisted of analysis to determine the location and orientation and to meet the project criteria. Phase one concluded with the attainment of regulatory approval and the purchase of the solar collector assembly. Phase two began in late 2012 with the engineering design and the tendering process, and 2013 is expected to bring the actual construction of the solar field which is anticipated to be fully functional by year end. Another long-term project by City Electric Utility staff is the automated metering project. After months of intense investigation and research, staff undertook a pilot that project that saw nearly 500 homes and businesses install electric, water, and gas utility meters and have the usage retrieved by wireless communication over a period of weeks. Medicine Hat is the first municipality in Canada to have combined all three utilities in one automated network system. In early December, the automated metering trial reports were shared with residents at an open house, and staff were on hand to discuss the results. 
Once City Council has had a chance to examine the report as well as take into account community feedback, a decision will be made on a move forward strategy. It is important to note that once the meters are installed, no access to the customer's property will be required to read meters. A popular move by the electric utility in response to concern over fluctuating monthly prices was the introduction of the electric fixed rate option. This option uh, provides a utility statement and assists residents and businesses by stabilizing the price of electricity. For 2012, the price was fixed at 9.87 cents, 9 cents per kilowatt hour. For, uh, and for 2013, the fixed rate price is a little bit lower at 9.68 cents per kilowatt hour. This amount is calculated based on the current natural gas price forecast and the fixed cost at the power plant plus the return on the equity. The city's environmental utility department started their construction season by resuming the replacement of water and sanitary sewer line in the city. This time on 2nd Street Southeast between Birch and Woodman Avenue. The majority of the project was completed with, with final surface asphalt left to be done this spring. They ended the season in October with the installation of a water line from the south side of Briar Park Road Northwest along Samrau Drive. As you can see, there's gonna be lots of pavement this year just to finish the jobs. Additional environmental utility projects in 2012 were building and mechanical upgrades to both the water treatment and water waste uh, water treatment plants, including a recently completed expansion to meet water demand for a total service population of 75,000 customers. The proposed Medicine Hat plan, which was formerly called the Municipal Development Plan, was last revised in, in 2004, and that was updated and presented to City Council. The Medicine, Medicine Hat plan is a long-term planning document guiding development and growth in the city. By establishing a strategy and, and vision for land use and planning as we go to a population of 100,000 and plus. Consultants retained by the planning department work with the public, stakeholders, and city department to create a report that was presented at an open house to residents before it went before council in May for the first reading. Along with the Medicine Hat plan, Planning, building, and development is, cur is currently updating the existing land use bylaw with input from the public, which included two open houses held in June. The land use bylaw would reflect the values, goals, and needs of, of people living in the city and is an important tool for implementing the policies of Medicine Hat Plan and other planning documents. Throughout the fall, the land use bylaw team integrated feedback and analysis to develop the final proposed land use bylaw which will be again presented to the public prior to being recommended to the Municipal Planning Commission and City Council in 2013. It wasn't all road and water and sewer line construction for the season, however. In the fall, Municipal Work began a pilot project that included transitioning the existing downtown gas lamp along 4th Avenue Southeast to LED lighting by outfitting the current natural gas feed with electrical power. The LED lighting is more economical as the lamp will power down during the day and not be lit constantly like the gas lamps. The LED also offers brighter light than the gas lamp for the safety of pedestrians walking after dark. The traditional look of the existing gas lamp has been retained. As another economical cost-cutting pilot project, Municipal Work installed the first induction street light as an alternative to the existing high-pressure sodium street lights. Induction street lights provides an average of 50% power cost saving compared to, with the existing street lights, which need to be replaced every three to four years. Significant saving are also realized as the new induction lights are designed to be, main, to be maintenance free for 10 to 15 years. So you need to pilot project undertaken this year was the replacement of a number of concrete sidewalks to a rubber material which appears to be more resistant to weather changes and cracks caused by uh, uh, tree roots growth. Because the material includes recycled tires, the provincial government provides a grant for the pilot project. Gentlemen, thank you for supporting us. The sidewalk's resilience will be monitored over a period of months, especially during the month season, sorry, during the winter season. 
to determine its longevity and usefulness as a permanent sidewalk material. The Parks Department was kept busy re with redeveloping a number of city playgrounds to accessible areas. The Ross Glen and Strathcona Water Park and Playground were con completely redeveloped with, knee with new uh, equipment to both the play playground and the water park and Samus Rotary Park in the Vista area received a completely new water playground. And I can tell you there's a lot of families that have uh, passed on um, congratulatory messages to us on those. The kids are there and they're full of people. In May, Lions Park received Medicine Hat's first outdoor fitness area, consisting of a number of structures designed to emulate gymnasium fitness equipment, including an elliptical, core station, and parallel bars, among others. The fitness area allows users to exercise in a quiet, peaceful atmosphere out of doors at no cost. Its proximity to the Viner Center makes it a, a perfect location for our senior population to access. This project is a joint venture between the City of Messinat and the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee. In 2012, the City's Senior Services staff initiated a consultation and planning process resulting in the development of a five-year administration action plan. Six future directions for Senior Services emerged during the process. The first one was to establish a focus on community wellness for older adults. The second one was to improve accessibility to program activities and services. The third one was to become a recognized information center on issues affecting older adults. Fourth, to expand service capacity in order to respond effectively to the needs of older adults at risk or in need of personal support. Fifth, was to, to increase public awareness of the value, contribution, and needs of older, older adults. And the sixth, Part was to partner internally and with other sectors in the facilitation of an age-friendly community initiative. In February, City Council held their own strategic planning session in Moose Jaw, including a tour of downtown Moose Jaw and their new arena, Mosaic Place. At the conclusion of the, se the session, Council compiled a strategic planning document, listing priorities and issues that were felt, that we felt, should receive the utmost attention throughout 2012, including our own regional event center. Moosha, like Medicinat, lost most, sorry, Moosha, like Medicinat, lost major retail location in the downtown during the 80s, and the whole community suffered with that loss. Through task force committees and the municipal government commitment, some unique design and current attraction and its past history forged into a vision of a vibrant downtown, downtown core. Our council believes this is also possible in Medicine Hat. To help that vision succeed, the Medicine Hat Downtown Development Incentive Program was developed and gained momentum in 2012 as more business owners became aware of the program. To increase usability, City Council approved revision to the program, increasing the maximum dollar cap on several of the ex existing grants. Two new grants were added, including the Architecture and Visual Enhancement Grant, which provides funding to assist both the look and feel of the building, as well as the Environmental Site Assessment and Remedial Risk Management Grant for use when buildings are required to have an environmental assessment completed, or the building owner chooses to have one done to determine wh whether to go ahead with renovation. At the end of 2012, more than 286,000 has been provided to downtown property owners in the form of these grants. And I think there was 25 requests altogether that were handled. Many, uh, many great festivals and events happened during 2012 to draw residents and visitors to the downtown and the community. Two major downtown summer events included the very popular downtown chili cook-off, of which I was a, a judge walked away with lots of chili in that belly. And that was just before the Mesonet Exhibition in Stampede and the Family, fr family Friendly Spectrum Sunshine Festival held in the month of June. These events continue to be a great way to promote our downtown and its, and, and its many unique shopping and dining experiences. There were many other anniversaries celebrated through the summer, including Bow Island and Red Cliff's 100 years of anniversary, Calgary Stampede 100 year celebration, Medicine Hat's own exhibition is Stampede 125 years anniversary, which was celebrated at the end of July. Volunteers and staff pulled out all the stop 
uh, for this milestone anniversary and also the series of events around the community throughout the year. Communities in bloom. The judges visited the city in, in early August. We eagerly awaited this opportunity to showcase our community again. Winners are unable to compete for two years after a win by visitors and, and the judges. Sorry, let me repeat this. Winners are unable to compete for two years after a win. But visitors and judges are still able to enjoy the beauty of a tidy and vibrantly decorated city that continues to sustain our potential as a relocation and tourist destination. City Council and the medicine and tourism industry providers are, are motivated to move tourism forward in 2013. We have many unique attractions and features with the, light, with the ability to make them first class. Tourism groups um, are in the process of creating a tourism destination development marketing organization, which is called the DDMO, to improve our competitive edge and to help boost our economy through tourism revenue by marketing our attraction and uniqueness. In October, we opened our doors to a contingent from, uh, of American business people from, for the Ports to Plain group. This year was the first time the conference was held outside of the United States, which speaks to not only the strategic importance of Medicine Hat, but also the efforts of the local Ports to Plain members in promoting our city. The Ports to Plain's goal is to open up the route for goods to move efficiently between Canada and the United States, and particularly products destined for the oil sands. This is a great economic opportunity for Messinet, as it will create job, business opportunity, and new market if the route is successful and runs through our community. On the agenda was discussion about Wild Horse and the commitment to expand the hours of operation to upgrade it to a commercial border crossing. The visitors didn't hesitate to tell us what we were doing right with our attraction and the potential available for tourists and residents. In June, the final number of the 2012 city census was circulated. The report indicated that 61,180 people uh, now call medicine at home with the largest growth area in Southlands. Males continue to outnumber the females on, until middle age, and from middle age upwards, women consistently outnumber men. Demographically speaking, the age group 25 to 44 constitute the largest portion of our population at 27%. And that's important to know from a business point of view <laughs> and from a workforce. I want to thank residents for opening their doors for the census takers. The information gathered allows us to better serve the community and access funding opportunities to assist with just such things as traffic and safety issues, service program, as well as recreational needs. To keep our residents engaged and provide timely information, the City of Missinette launched a new website featuring a more intuitive layout and a brighter, cleaner visual look. The website is more user-friendly with an enhanced search function and improved features including latest news and upcoming events and meetings located on, located on the home page. The City website receives about 3,000 visitors per day. I was a bit disappointed in the communities in boom, not blooms, the communities in boom report from the Canadian Federation of Independent Business that was circulated in 2012, rating Medicine Hat as number 88 out of 103 communities as top entrepreneurial cities. Speaking at the mayor's breakfast in October, <clears throat> I shared the, the many benefits to small communities, sorry, I shared the, the, the many benefits to small businesses and the opportunities we offer. First thing is our rental space per square foot is cheaper than either Lethbridge and, and Red Deer. We also have, we are located on highway number one and three, and less than an hour from the United States border with low utilities and we charge no business tax. We also have a lower unemployment rate than both the provincial and federal average. And lastly, uh, we're given the rate of violent crime is lower than other communities compared to ours, there isn't a city much safer than Medicine Hat in this province. Statistics are in our favor on this one. So I'm not sure uh, I see the report as completely accurate, especially when the writer indicated that his comments was, there is no single best way to measure entrepreneurship quotient of cities. However, quality of, of life was rated as 93.9% in Medicine Hat. 
Now that is what I can agree on. So in September, the City of Messinet and the Messinet Fire Services were pleased to receive a set of keys to the major event support apparatus called MESA. The MESA is a 2010 fire freight liner vehicle designed and equipped to support municipal and regional emergency and disaster response in southern Alberta on behalf of the province of Alberta. <clears throat> This was a great wel welcoming gift for our new fire chief, Brian Stout, who was appointed in early October. Chief Stout has been with the Messinat uh, Fire Service for 18 years, the last few as, as deputy fire chief of operation. Former fire chief Ron Robinson stepped down after 34 years as a firefighter uh, and uh, five of those as fire chief to take the role of director of emergency management playing a strategic role in, in crisis management. And we need to have this, by the way. Another great achievement is that our local me uh, medic air helicopter, ALO, which has been in the air around this and that an area for five years, logging more than 100 service calls. ALO has saved many lives by, by being able to get into remote and difficult terrain, as well as traveling faster than a land ambulance could. Without other fun, without other funded medical, medic air in our area, it is with the gratitude that we celebrate this vital service and the staff fundraisers and volunteers that work tirelessly to ensure that this helicopter remains in the air throughout, uh, through donations alone. Which, by the way, that's why I wrote a letter to the province to see if we can get our share uh, of assistance to keep the, uh, the chopper in the air. In December, a unique and innovative approach to Christmas giving was initiated by the City Customer Service Department. At the request of a resident, a gift certificate was made available for an employee event door prize. Staff felt this was a wonderful idea and promoted to the city at, the, at large as a gift of warmth for the holidays. Available in increments of $25, $50, $75, or $100, the gift cards became a very popular gift for the, for the season with more than $1,000 worth of cards purchased by Christmas. Unfortunately, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I told you I would celebrate all the things we did. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I, 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 I suppose nothing gave Messinat more exposures, uh, both nationally and internationally, than our story about the, the rats. <laughs> at a press conference in mid-August, city officials confirmed the presence of a rat colony at the city landfill. The Alberta government immediately engaged measures to control the creatures. A cooperative approach by Cypress County, city of Messinat, and the province went into high gear. We hired a, a pest control company to set up bait station and traps in high risk location within the, the city limits. Agriculture and rural development, which, uh, which is called a ARD, a -R -D, supplied the city with bait. Our bylaw officers investigated sightings, uh, city and county employees also checked traps, dealt with local, national and even international media, and everyone participated in a sustained effort to regain Alberta rats free status which was established in 1950. So finally, on September 20, 25th, the 80-meter-long rat, uh, rat nesting site at the landfill was destroyed. It took six hours for the 21 workers and two excavators to dismantle the den. No live rats were found, thank goodness. The source of the rats remains under investigation. I just read in the Calgary paper they have their issues right now with that too. Uh, in that large city. As you can see, 2012 was a very busy and productive year, not just for rats. Uh, staff were kept busy with not only major construction projects, but pilot projects and infrastructure replacement that will keep our city and the community functioning well into the future. So as we begin 2013, it appears to be another banner year. The three-year budget processes Approved in 2012, listed projected construction of 2000, for 2013, and as with 2012, they will provide improvements to infrastructure, public facility, and our roadways. Firstly, I would like to extend my thanks to the Redford government for honoring promises to the mess in that area uh, before 2012 provincial election, including the Dunmore Road and Trans Canada intersection here, as well as the expansion of the Messinat Regional Hospital.
because it was needed and it's a move forward. City Council was pleased with the news that the long-awaited Dunmore Road Trans Canada Highway overpass was approved by the province. In the fall of 2012, the project was open for tender and awarded to a local company, Salt Rock Limited. We are hoping that the project runs smoothly and quickly uh, and with as little disruption as possible to our traffic and local business. But there will be some disruption, I can almost predict that. Council is eager for the start of the $30 million project. I think, it, I think it's actually a little bit less than that from what I, can, I was told. The $220 million expansion of Minnesota Regional Hospital was the other bit of good news Council had been waiting for for a long time. From an expanded emergency room and ambulatory care to an updated diagnosis lab, this will be a welcome addition to our city and the surrounding region. Travel to our city may be a bit of a challenge in 2003, as not only the Dunmore Road and interchange is going to be torn up, but construction on the Trans Canada Bridge will be continuing. When the original construction company walked away from the highway bridge uh, project after going into receivership, a new company was awarded the contract, but not after losing weeks of ideal construction weather during the summer. The $19 million project is still expected to be completed in the fall 2013. I don't know if they're going to make it. Let's hope we have good weather. There will be many municipal construction activity along with these uh, provincial projects as staff prepare city infrastructure replacement and upgrades throughout the city in the spring and continue incorporations of council strategic priorities. A full review of updates to the roadway system master plan is scheduled for completion in 2013. Once completed, the plan will identify future 5, 10 and 20 year capital improvement uh, to allow the city to meet traffic and pedestrian requirement. Key aspects of the review, which are, com which are complete and incorporated in the city planning include downtown parking assessment, which determines current condition and community needs as well as future requirement. Cycling master plan, which provides guidance for the community to grow and develop the on-street cycling network. An assessment of the advantages and disadvantages of converting downtown streets from one way to two ways in response to the downtown businesses. And an assessment of the transportation network at current and up to 95,000 population horizon, consistent with future city growth strategies. A model was also developed which allows the city to continually assess and forecast future roadway demands. South Ridge Drive Southeast will be wrapped up as far as a project with top lift paving, as I mentioned earlier, Strachan Road, Sierra Boulevard to, to uh, Vista Drive will all be upgraded. We also have uh, the South Boundary Road to Sierra Boulevard and from Gearing Road to Kipling needs a last coat to finish that project. As part of the downtown redevelopment plan, municipal work will begin enhancement to the 600 block of 2nd Street Southeast by renewing underground utilities, including water main and storm sewer. Visual improvements will include changes to the mid-block pedestrian crossing, LED street lights conversion, and the addition of more street, uh, sorry, more, more trees and ben uh, benches. The Dunmore Road bridge deck at the intersection of Kipling Street, Allowance Avenue, and Kingsway will include replacement of the bridge deck. So you probably will have a little bit of delays there. Contrary repairs as well as the functional study to determine what updates are required to improve the service level at that intersection, which is actually a very busy one. Upgrades to the existing water and sewer lines continue with numerous act areas scheduled for construction in 2013. Third, Third Street Southeast between Ash and Woodman Avenue is the next area and the phase of construction that saw First Street, Second Street, and 4th, 5th, and 6th Avenue downtown improving uh, in 2011. And 2nd Street Southeast near the curling rink and arena area upgrades. So we've got to finish some of the work that's there. We're also scheduled for water and sewer mains in these, these areas. So this coming year and 5th Avenue Southeast will we'll see an upgrade to its existing water line as well. Additionally, I hope I'm not boring you, because this is where all the money is going in, so. 
Additionally, the upgrades to the Box Spring Road sewer line will, be, re, will uh, recommence in the spring. With phase two of that project and the Connaught subdivision major project reconstruction will round out phase two as well with water sewer, storm sewer and road upgrades scheduled for the spring. Both the water and wastewater treatment plant will be upgraded in the coming year. The water treatment plant will see the construction of the decolonization facility. Recent legislation that imposed stricter limits on the limit of chlorine into our waterways. Construction of this decolonization facility will eliminate uh, any future chlorine discharge into our environment from the water treatment access. Apparently it's very hard for the fish. The wastewater treatment plant will see chemically enhanced primary treatment upgrades to its facility. These upgrades will increase our treatment efficiency by reducing the amount of nutrients and suspended particulates being discharged back into our river. Upgrades at both facilities will positively impact water quality within the South Saskatchewan River and provide a healthier environment for all its inhabitants. As I mentioned earlier, three of the city's water uh, park playgrounds receive upgrades to the infrastructure and improvements to the accessibility of that infrastructure in 2012. In 2013, the last and the oldest water uh, playground, the Kiwanis Central Park Water Playground, which came about at about 1989, will undergo renovation. The improvements will make it a, a user-activated a user water playground, which will uh, incorporate water con conservation. The current Terrace Area Municipal Reserve in Crescent Heights will have a parcel of land to the immediate east of 11th Avenue Northeast, landscaped with, landscaped with turf, trees, and irrigation. Other parks and recreation projects anticipated this year are the asphalt overlay of the leisure trail system at various locations and upgrades to the cemetery irrigation system. Our, our Family Leisure Center is anticipated upgrades to the Metanex Bowl and a building expansion. We have approached the Federal Finance Minister to assist with an infrastructure funding grant of $10 million to assist with the project at a cost of $36 million for this expansion. We're still waiting for an announcement or news of this funding, which we hope comes early in 2013 so construction can start as soon as possible. As well, the police services building expansion is well underway. You've probably seen it if you went to the Tigers game. The first stage of the project involved the, the redevelopment of the south side of 800 blocks of 2nd Street Southeast into a fence parking area and garage which is almost complete. The second stage involves the expansion of existing facility with a three-story addition and underground parkade. The expansion is required to meet the growing needs of the service for the next 25 years and beyond. The total project cost is estimated at $21 million and expected to be completed in the spring 2014. You can log on to the police service website to view live feed of the construction with the aid of camera that has been installed to capture the progress. Now that was a great idea so that people can see where the money's going or who's leaning on the shovel. <laughs> In June of 2012, several Canadian communities were presented with an opportunity to address WestJet Executive in Calgary, indicating why we felt our community was one of the best places for, for WestJet to bring their new Encore air service. A group of us traveled to Calgary for the presentation, offering regional airport statistics and area demographics. I'm confident that MESNAV would be an asset to WestJet portfolio. The size and the population of the area we service, as well as the number of travelers that resort to vehicular traffic rather than pay the cost of current air travel options, or make, or make do with limited uh, flight times, are all important factors in their, division, in their decision. With the potential of WestJet service, Council expedited our airport terminal expansion. The expansion is required to meet the customer service expectation of passengers. <clears throat> and existing and potential air carriers interested in serving the medicine that air travel market, as well as positioning the city to meet growth opportunity in the future. And uh, we have assigned $3 million for the uh, terminal. Uh, residents with disability were assisted with living option in 2012, with phase one of an affordable housing project in Southlands completed. The 2013 Phase two will be initiated to, with an additional 16 units to be added to the complex. 
And to assist these individuals further, Medicine Hat Transit ex has expanded its special transit service to include all statutory holidays for 2013. Good move forward on this one. The transfer of Box Spring uh, Wind Farm to the private developer, Box Spring Wind Corporation, which will see the start of a construction of the wind farm is anticipated to begin in March 2013, with the commissioning of the wind farm set for fall 2013. The project will consist of three wind turbine in engineering enough energy to meet the needs of approximately 1,850 residential homes. Environmentally friendly, the goal of modifying the existing environmental roadmap was reached in 2012. In 2013, Council hopes to implement the strategi strategies and goals brought forward and updated by the roadmap as one of our current priorities includes a, a goal as a leader in environmental practices. We hope to promote and partner with any fiscally sound possibility and project in the green industry to eventually become a leader in the, in the industry. The Regional Event Center will be the most anticipated project scheduled for uh, 2013. <clears throat> At its regular meeting on December 17, 2012, City Council approved entering into a formal memorandum of agreement with the Box Spring Business Park for a 20-acre site to locate the proposed new Reg uh, Medicine Hat Regional Event Center. Following Council's uh, direction of September 17, this agreement was successfully negotiated between the parties, its sign and its deal. With this agreement in place, the City can focus on, com on completing the, the, or sorry, the design built request for proposal process uh, by May 2013. Should City Council be in favor of one of the three design built proposal and formal approved construction by June 2013, the City will then take title of the 20 acre parcel in Box Springs. The selected designer built could commence on site construction by next summer. It is my hope that the final marketing of the Glanville site with a firm agreement in place for construction on the property will occur in 2013. I think we're getting very close on this one. Negotiations are ongoing with a qualified developer. The potential marketing and economic benefits of, of growth on this property will be a significant importance to be continued, sorry, to the continued revitalization of the downtown. Economic development, that was one of those aspects or priorities we put in, became an important priority for the City Council in 2012. An ad hoc economic development committee met to examine the resources provided by the City of Messinat economic development con contractors and the value of return on this investment. Also as a partner with the Tourism Industry Group and its destination development marketing organization, I talked about DDMO, the city will definitely see potential tourism initiative begin as the DMO is expected to be uh, operational in early 2013. It is expected the DDMO will coordinate resource, resources to improve Medicine Hat's marketing and expose um, exposure as a tourism destination. Uh, DDMO, for people who don't understand, that's a branding, need a branding to sell tourism. The city con uh, continues to work with the chamber Alberta Health Service is another interested party in the city to recruit physicians to our community. Family doctors, specialists, and their spouses and families are escorted throughout the medicine that when they visit. It is hoped that these excursions will entice them to stay by promoting the recreational med medical uh, shopping facility we offer. Benefits uh, our community offers are also highlighted including the relative uh, safety of our city, the short commute time, wonderful schools, art, culture programs, in close proximity to places such as Calgary, United States, and the Cypress Hills. <coughs> and I've seen a lot of doctors, and actually quite a few are here now, and, and there's one that just got a message yesterday, is trying to come here. Uh, so it, it's coming. In closing, I want to let the community know that it is uh, with great pride, uh, I stand here today telling you about the wonderful things we have accomplished and the many great things that we have yet to achieve in the coming year. It would be remiss of me to not mention that although City Council has the final approval on the project's initiative brought forth, we couldn't do anything uh, were it not for the dedication of lawyer employees that work for the City of Mess and Hat. Uh, they are the subject matter experts, the engineers, operations people, administrative staff, innovators that are constantly seeking best practices and in many cases 
looking outside the box to ensure Medicinehead is often the benchmark for many of these unique concept initiatives. I express my sincere gratitude to these teams of people that succeed in making Medicinehead one of the best, most progressive communities I know. A community is about much more than places, budget, infrastructure. It's first and for, uh, foremost uh, about people. And uh, along with the dedication of city employees, each member of council has worked diligently over the past year, indeed the past three years in this cycle, to, mar to make our city vibrant, modern, and self-sustaining. Uh, city council believes that listening to our residents, our businesses, and our city workers, and hearing concerns and addressing them through any medium, be it uh, Facebook, Twitter, face-to-face, -face, email, over the phone, is one of the most important things we do as elected official. So our purpose here is to improve the quality of life in our community for the people of Messinat. So we are committed to making sure that we leave this vineyard in a better shape. And finally, I would like to remind you of the municipal election taking place uh, this October and encourage you to, to get out and vote. When you vote, you choose a city council who will make the bylaws and policies that govern you uh, and how you live and, and bring so many good things to you as uh, residents of this city. We want to support the issue that we are important, that they are important to you, and voting is the best way to do that. You choose a candidate who is interested in what you believe and have to, and have to say, and that has a voice at the table to speak on your behalf. So once again, let me thank our host, the Medicine Hat uh, Kiwanis uh, Club, and also the Medicine Hat Chamber of Commerce for hosting us. And I offer you my sincere wishes and on behalf of City Council for a healthy, uh, prosperous, and happy 2003, 2013. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Your Worship. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not, not that I'm choked up at all. It just is, you know, very, very, <coughs> goodness sake, excuse me. <coughs> Normally I hone this voice to a, a fine, uh, anyway, whatever. But the fact is, uh, you know, you uh, have covered a plethora of information here. It just overwhelmed me, and just all of our inquiring minds wanted to know what was happening. Now we know. And so uh, I'm going to uh, very quickly ask uh, Len Mitzel, who is on behalf of the Chamber, uh, to uh, express thanks and uh, I give uh, the, the Mayor a small gift that he's going to give to a charity of his choice. Leonardo. Thank you, Ken. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Boucher. For those of you who well, haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my name is Len Mitzel, and I'm a director of the Medicine Hat District Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the Medicine Hat Chamber of Commerce, thank you to each of you for supporting this unique event, this annual event. Our president, Jason Melhoff, sends his regrets as he's unable to attend today's event. Now, this event is one that I personally look forward to uh, in the past, each year, while in another capacity, and the Chamber is pleased to again host it in partnership with the Medicine Hat Kiwanis Club. Looking at the number of people in the room here, I think it's clear that this partnership works well, and I'd like to extend a special thank you to Ken Sauer and to Sandy Seifert with the Kiwanis Club for their help in organizing this event with the Chamber. At this time, I'd like to thank Mayor Boucher on behalf of the Chamber Commerce Board of Directors and its members for taking the time to speak with us today and for highlighting the issues faced and the progress made in the past year, as well as giving us a preview of what we can look forward to in 2013. As a token of our appreciation, I'd like to present Mayor Boucher with a, uh, a, a donation made in your name to a local charity of your choice, and if you'd like to come up. Mayor Boucher has chosen the Salvation Army. Thank you once again. With the support of a strong business community, we can continue to provide opportunities, benefit, and advocacy for you. 
We encourage you to take a fresh look at the Chamber and to see what's new and coming up in 2013. Stop by the office, talk to our staff, or visit us online at www.medicinehatchamber.com. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Leonardo. Leonardo de Mitzel, Leonardo de Helfrich. We've got a couple of them. Now, Mike Christie, who we just want to make this comment. Vital signs, I think, cover the waterfront, but now if you include all the information that Mayor Boucher has, that vital signs is going to be double the size. But you're up to it. I know it. Know it. Now, Darlene Baker, our president of the Kiwanis Club, who has tasked me with being your MC, I know she said, oh, please, carry on. You've done it for 30 years. But he, she's going to come forward and say thank you, too, and make a donation to charity. Mark Darlene. On behalf of the Medicine at Kiwanis Club, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Um, Norm, Mr. Mayor, on behalf of the Kiwanis Club, we have also issued a check uh, to the charity of your choice, the Salvation Army, and we'd like to present that to you. As well, Samantha, if you would like to come up, we have a token of our appreciation for you as well. Well, she, I thought she was singing for us. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd they go there, kid? <laughs> Thank you all again for coming, and I'll turn it back over to Ken. Thank you, Darlene. Oh, a great president, you know, and she's been suffering here. I think she's just at the tail end of a, of a flu. Uh, but uh, she'll make it, she'll make it. And I want to thank uh, Sandy and, of course, Paula and Bridget at the Chamber. We get together, by the way, in 10 minutes we organize this. <laughs> <laughs> then we phone Melanie and say, here, how many tables we've got? And it's all set up. And then, of course, you get all this power in this room. I am just actually empowered myself, looking at all the professionals, the, the, the businessmen, the corporate sector, the educational institutions, uh, the foundations and so on. Oh, what a day for me. But I'm going to have to pay you. This, this is the 50-50 draw which, which you invested in. And it was $175. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to lean over and I'm going to get Francis to pull out the ticket. And pull out mine if you want to. <laughs> oh, here is the winning ticket. The late Fred Shearer, if you recall Fred, Mr. President, he always predicted ahead of time that he was going to win, and he did. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check mine first, just in case. <laughs> I, I, would want to, I wouldn't want to be embarrassed. Well, they sold me one without a number. That's no good. Oh, I just missed it by a, by a whisker. One, six, seven, one. Zero, five. Who is the winner? Leonardo, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I want to see your ticket. You we have to, you, this ports to plain man here. Oh, it is. 167105. Thank you. I'd like to present this to the Salvation Army. Well, he's going to present it. Norm, will you hear it's another donation to the Salvation Army? Boy, I tell you, Major Jaster will be extremely excited to, to top up his Salvation Army kettle. And by the way, we get very involved with that too. So, for all of you, thank you for coming. You've been a real bright audience. I have been amazed at your focus on the mayor and on me. 